What's going on? Welcome to Blockchain Tech and Finance with me, your host. I'm going to check the stream here. Hopefully everything's running all right. Check the audio. Um, usually, typically, I was always doing this on YouTube and several months. Actually, it's been a bit. Just being able to do these kind of streams uh, via YouTube. I'm going to check the audio. All right, audio sounds great. I'm just going to keep on going. I've got a slew of a few little a few different articles to read from source today. Let's we'll start out with the market data's in general. Bring out. See, I've got a dashboard in front of me also, so kind of like Twitch. Would be cool if I could see a live chat, but I do have a mobile device on me for for the uh live chat part so if you want to watch chat go for it send some hearts whatever you do more power to you and bitcoin is pumping what can i say i'm gonna see uh eventually streaming on x will allow also for downloading these videos to upload on the youtube side um but otherwise Maybe we can do like a screen grab recording and put it on, on YouTube since I'm core to doing blockchain tech and finance via YouTube. Anyways, regardless of that, let's go right on into what the market has closed with today. And obviously the cryptocurrency markets are nonstop, so it'll just be an ongoing thing. All right, so start with the US market data we have the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at down 0.58% Nasdaq Composite closed at 0.27% in the green S&P 500 closed at 0.17% down global real time USD Dow is up 0.05% gold continuous contract is down 0.08% and crude oil up 0.82% on the US markets in the Europe market data is we have FTSE 100 index down 0.37%, the DAX up 0.02%, the CIC 40 index up 0.5%, FTSE MIB index up 0.74%, the IBEX 35 index down 0.37%, the stocks Europe 600 down 0.13%. In the Asia market, the Asia Dow down 0.26%, the Nikkei 225 down 0.19%. Hong Seng index is down 0.72%. The Shanghai Composite index is down 1.47%. S&P BSE Sensex is down. The FTSC Straits Times is down 0.76%. The S&P ASX 200 0.21%. The Kospi index is up 0.1%. In currencies for Forex, we got the Euro 0% change. Japanese yen up 0.03%. The British pound up 0.02%. The Australian dollar up 0.05%. The US dollar index up 0.04%. And the WSJ dollar index up, I'm sorry, down 0.01%. In the cryptocurrency markets, Bitcoin is pumping up five, almost 6%, 5.89% 5 at 33,435 index. And we're going to talk about why in this news article I'm going to be reading from here in just a moment. On other regards, we got Ethereum. Up 0.381% at $1,773.96 per uh, USD per ETH. XRP is up 2.1% uh, Bitcoin Cash up 0.5 up 5.54%. Litecoin up 3.15% and Monero up 1.68%. Uh, ETH, Bitcoin, and Monero are very are the most interesting to me. Let's see, we got the rates. US Treasury is up 0 0.018 government 10-year government bond uh, germany 10-year government bond is down 0 0.017 italy 10-year government bond is down 0 0.098 spend uh, spain 10-year bond is down 0 0.018 point uk 10-year guilt down 0 0.054 and japan 10-year government bond is down 0 0.01 on the futures Again, we got crude oil up 0.84%. Gold continuous contract is up, uh, sorry, down 0.09%. E mini NASDAQ 100 index continuous contract is up 0.2%. E mini Dow continuous contract up 0.13%. E mini S&P 500 futures are up 0.18%. And the silver is down 0.26% on the futures. 
First article I have here is from investors.com. And we're going to talk about why Bitcoin is pumping here. So Bitcoin cryptocurrency stocks surge as SEC ordered to review Grayscale Spot Bitcoin ETF application. Bitcoin and several cryptocurrencies and related stocks such as Coinbase Global Coin, Marathon Digital Holdings Mara, and Riot Platforms RIOT, and MicroStrategy MSTR continuous, uh, continue to surge Monday after a U.S. appeals court ordered the Securities and Exchange Commission to review Grayscale's application for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Not interested in that. Thanks, though. The Monday order follows the appeal. Uh, appeals court late august ruling siding with grayscale the sec did not appeal within 45 days triggering monday's expected decision the sec could still reject grayscale's grayscale spot bitcoin etf application but would need to find a new justification several others have submitted spot bitcoin ETF, etf applications as well the bitcoin price jumped 33,000 today uh, up 10 percent uh, versus 24 hours as of yesterday the pro shares bitcoin strategy etf bito which tracks Bitcoin futures leapt 5.3% in the late in the late future and sorry in the late trade after surging 6.1% in Monday session Ethereum and other big cryptocurrency traded above $1,750 per ETH and cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase popped 5.5% in late trading Coin stock rose 3.4% to $77.21 on Monday session Monday session among Bitcoin miners Mara stock and Riot stock left uh, leapt roughly 9% late after surging 12.8% and 9% respectively. Monday Bitcoin buyer MicroStrategy gained 7%, adding to Monday's 8.5% gain. So um, that's why, kind of why we're seeing uh, this pump on Bitcoin right now. All right, so my audio is still going there. Just checking the monitors. See what we got next. So going from blockchain news into some. Oh, actually, you know what? I want to grab. That was crypto news. So about Bitcoin news, we're going to do some blockchain news here now. Then we'll do this NFT piece of news. Granted that this will load. Why don't you want to load? Well, maybe we'll just read from this one. Let me see here. So I just had it up. Blockchain. News. Let's go. Let's see if this will load. Doesn't want to load. Um, like I did before, not sure why. I will leave that loading for, oh, here we go. That was weird. All right, anyways, Cointelegraph Research, tracking stolen crypto, how blockchain analysis helps recover funds. Over $900 million was hacked in crypto in 2023. How can blockchain analysis help in finding and retrieving stolen assets? Amid the rapid evolu evolution of decentralized finance, DeFi, and the broader Web3 landscape, security is of paramount importance. New threats continue to emerge, making it essential to understand attack patterns for risk assessment and reliability evaluation. In 2023 alone, over $990 million was lost or stolen, according to Cointelegraph's crypto hack database. And this growing demand for security has led to the emergence of a diverse ecosystem of Web3 security Expertise ranging from decentralized identity solutions to smart contract auditors ensuring the safety of this dynamic digital space. The Lazarus Group, a state affi affiliated hacking group from North Korea, remains a persistent threat. Lazarus was responsible for confirmed losses, to losses totaling at least $291 million in 2023. Even as the year progressed into the third quarter, Lazarus remained active and was responsible for the attack on Coinex, resulting in losses exceeding $55 million, leaving a chilling reminder of the uh, cybersecurity challenges and fortifying crypto security with blockchain analysis. Furthermore, even companies sometimes struggle to combat potential hacks and exploits. According to Solo, crypto enthusiasts need skills, <coughs> crypto enthusiasts need skills to conduct analysis and research to protect funds. Blockchain analysis 
is the investigation uh, investigative process of examining blockchain transactions to trace illicit activities and recover stolen assets and has a and basically it goes through a list of how it works and the transacting tracing blockchain analysis meticulously trace blockchain transactions involving stolen cryptocurrency and that will help basically seize funds going into uh, tumblers going into mixers and further tracking analysis of what's coming out of mixers and tumblers you know, i can talk about that more on uh, future streams also uh you know obviously locking up funds that are going to kexes and through dexes possibly um, let's see address clustering analysis group analyst groups sorry analyst group related addresses to identify the flow of stolen funds this clustering helps to understand how funds move between wallets Behavioral analysis Anal uh, analysts can identify unusual or suspicious behavior that may indicate hacking or theft by studying transaction patterns. In the pattern recognition, an analysts use historical data and known attack patterns to recognize emerging threats, allowing for early detection of, and mitigation. Regulatory village, uh, vigilance. Governments worldwide are pushing to introduce, introduce stricter anti-money laundering AML laws. Obviously, and know your customer KYC regulations in crypto. In a collaboration, blockchain analysis often involves collaboration with law enforcement agencies, exchanges, and other stakeholders to freeze or recover stolen assets. So you can say, um, when investigating a cryptocurrency hack, blockchain analysis is one of the tools at an investigator's disposable open source intelligence. OSINT is another critical component. Investigators use OSINT to gather information about individuals or entities involved in the hack. It may include using tools like Etherscan, Nansen, Tenderly, Effective, um, ETH active or breadcrumbs to understand the situation better by combining blockchain and analysts with OSINT investigators can construct a comprehensive view of the hack potentially identifying the perpetrators and involving stolen assets more effectively so obviously you have the top 10 crypto hacks in 2023 uh, BitTrue, GDAC, CoinsPay, Stake, CoinX, Curve, Atomic Wallet, Multi-Chain, Euler Finance and Mixin Network um, and what those rates were uh, how long is this? Art? Yeah, it's just about done. In notable case, the perpetrator of the Curve Finance exploit, which resulted in over $61 million in crypto losses in July 30th, has returned around $8.9 million in cryptocurrency to Alchemix Finance and Curve Finance. Surprisingly, the attacker's motive was not to evade capture, but to preserve the integrity of the exploited protocols. So that's like a white hat hacker, basically. Uh, here's the exploit, stuff like that. The attack exploiting a sort of, <laughs> um, obviously we want, want to return all of it, but the attack exploiting a re-entrancy bug so this is another thing about reentrancy. I can talk about that also, uh, reentrancy guards. So um, exploiting a reentrancy bug affected various pools, including Alchemex Finances, all ETH to ETH, JPEG and uh, yeah, pegged ETH and ETH metronome, um, some different pools basically. While the return funds represented roughly 50% of the total drain, this incident highlights the intricate ethical and motivational dynamics in the crypto space following security breaches. On-chain data remains an invaluable investigative tool unique to the world of blockchain and crypto assets thanks to the underlying distributed ledger technology. It, pro it provides all three enthusiasts with an exceptional window into asset, asset movements, transaction tracking, and robust analysis capabilities uh, make a, make the most of these opportunities by exploring that coin telegraph research crypto hacks database so there's an article right there and i'll have all these articles in the uh, description if i can get these up on youtube and downloaded obviously from uh, x platform an indispensable resource for gaining comprehensive insights in, into se uh, recent security incidents and emerging threats discover how this powerful tool can empower you to protect your crypto assets and stay ahead of potential risk the coin telegraph research team coin telegraph's research department comprises some of the best talents in the blockchain industry so that's about right here and uh coin telegraph does a great job so this writer this was from uh sometimes i like to read the writer but it doesn't have a writer on this one but yeah this is from coin telegraph research Tracking stolen crypto, how blockchain analysis helps recover funds. All right, I want to go into um, the piece of NFT news I was going to read be reading. It's going to be reading before. So this is Barnes and Thornbuck LLP. Writer reporter on here listed. No, I guess not. Uh, Stoner Cats settlement signals intensifying SEC interest in NFT offerings. 
So the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, announced a settlement enforcement action last month against Stoner Cats LLC. The SEC had alleged that SC2 scale of non-fungible token NFTs to fund uh, production of an animated web series constituted as an unregistered offering of crypto asset securities in violation of the Securities Act of 1933. SC2 neither admitted nor denied wrongdoing in the September uh, settlement order, which does not include any allegation of fraud. The SC2 ordered falls closely on the heels of the SEC's late August settlement with another S NFT issuer, Impact Theory LLC. Together, these proceedings showcase the SEC's emerging view that an issuance of NFTs in some cases may amount to a de facto securities offering subject to the registration requirements of the Securities Act. In the StonerCats NFT case, the StonerCats operate on the Ethereum blockchain. Each NFT is linked to an uniquely generated image of a character in the StonerCats animated series, which involves around house cats that become that becomes sentient after being exposed to their owner's medical marijuana. According to the SEC's order on July 27, 2021, SC2 offered and sold to investors more than 10,000 Sonar Cats NFTs for the ETH, equivalent of roughly $800 each. Um, I mean, $800 each is that's that's steep for. <laughs> but okay, the offering sold out in 35 minutes and yielded gross proceedings to SEC approximately. $8.2 million. An offering of investment contracts, the SEC found that SEC2's, SC2's issuance of NFTs was a public offering of securities violation of the registration provisions of the Security Act. The SEC had characterized the Stoner Cats offering as an offering of investment contracts under the so-called Howey test. That test says that an investment contract and thus a security exists when there is an investment of money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be delivered from the efforts of others. Um, I read about this. I think it was like... Um, really reliant on how they did their marketing basically and from my understanding and I'll, maybe i'll kind of state here i don't know if i want to read this whole thing but i'll skim through it a bit if it comes kind of drawn out but in a nutshell uh, i'm pretty sure some of their marketing was like you're gonna make a bunch of money from this and uh, uh things like that which um uh, you know it's not really the basis of uh, launching an nft collection especially well obviously we're seeing it here so um, the test says that investment contract and thus security exists when there's investment of money in a common enterprise with reasonable expectation, again, of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. The SE2 ordered doesn't spell out the SEC's Howey reasoning on an element by element basis, nor does the order refer pointedly to the NFT, them, uh, NFT themselves as securities. What does seem evident is that the SEC viewed the capital raising purpose of the Stoner Cats NFT offering and the SC2's related extensive media campaign as bringing the offering of NFTs within the investment contract framework. The order alleges that SC2 stated clearly that the NFT offering's purpose was to fund production of the Stoner Cats web series, emphasized the special skills and Hollywood experience the SC2 team would bring to the development process, touted the involvement of the web series. As well-known actors promised that a successful offering would facilitate the creation of a decentralized autonomous organization and the production of at least an one animated series a year for three years and made numerous public statements highlighting specific benefits of owning the NFTs, including the ability of investors to monetize any increased value of their NFT by reselling them on the secondary market. So, I mean, that right here, including the ability of, of investors to monetize any increased value of their NFTs by reselling them on the secondary market. So if they're saying that uh, heavily in their marketing, then, uh, you know, that's basically saying, buy this, put this money in, and you're going to walk away with more money profits. Uh, so that's like basically one thing you cannot publicly solicit um, any sort of like, whether it's, you know, you just can't publicly solicit like that when you're doing an offering um, based on the securities laws from the SEC. And you definitely cannot uh, really publicly solicit um, that it's just going to be for profit gains. In sum, it appears that the SEC thought the Stoner Cats NFT offered, uh, offering ticked the Howie boxes as a capital raising and platform development project with respect to the SE2 team, led investors to expect profits. So here it is right there. Led investors, quote, led investors to expect profits from its entrepreneurial and manager, managerial effect. Because a successful web series could cause the resale value of the Stoner Cats NFTs to rise in the secondary market. So it's basically how they uh, basically um, executed their marketing probably via Twitter and um, Discord, maybe YouTube videos and stuff like that. A particularly interesting aspect of SE2's, SE2 order is its emphasis on the means by which SE2 would benefit from secondary market trading. The SEC found that the Stoner Cats NFTs were configured to pay SE2 as the is NFT issuer 
uh, a 2.5% royalty for each secondary market transaction in the NFTs following an approach in impact theory. The SEC believed that the prospect of receiving trading-based royalties gave SC2 an incentive to encourage secondary market activity and that SC2's public encouragement, in fact, prompted individuals to spend more than $20 million acquiring NFTs in the last 10,000 secondary market transactions during and following the initial offering. So they raised $20 million. Um, that's no small number, right? And basically, they use the fact that they're going to use their secondary marketing royalty, royalties uh, to basically, <clears throat> you know, continue uh, the aspect that, you know, holders are going to be making more money from the royalties. So that's another aspect is that um, this was also um, found to be in a, I thought, I want to say it was Rihanna was going to do an NFT or something like that, where it's like the trade royalties we're going to spread from the music back to holders. So, but they had to like um, basically nix that. And I've heard of that several different varieties. Uh, basically, you just can't share your royalties uh, back to holders like that. It's also kind of falling in the line of the Howey test. So directly porting ETH back to holders. I just adjust, my, adjust myself in my seat here. Trying to like pick myself up a bit. Maybe I can get this. This chair only goes so high, so I'm trying to like actually kneel on the chair a bit. But anyways, remedies and settlement. In addition to the standard cease and desist order, SE2 agreed agreed to. And I'm probably not going to uh, really read much more because you can read this takeaways obviously there and dissenting SEC commissioners by going into uh, Barnes and Thornburg or BTLaw.com. You can look up the Sterner Cat settlements here. Uh, search right there. So. Yeah, obviously, in the settlement, this included publication of the settlement order on SE2's website and social media channels, payment of a $1 million civil fine committing to help SEC distribute the fine to NFT purchasers, and destruction of the Stoner Cats NFT still in SE2's possession. So not only did they, like, people, like, spend $800 on these, it's like they have to destroy them. Uh, so they just have to, like, burn all the NFTs on the ETH blockchain. So it destroys every single PFP on there. <clears throat> these actions are similar and thrust to those mandated by the prior impact th theory settlement order unlike impact theory however the remedies in the stoner cats order did not include a requirement for se2 to disable a secondary trading royalties arrangement but yeah um i'm not going to read the rest there you can skim through on there let's keep going over to some tech news we got Reuters, exclusive NVIDIA to make ARM-based PC chips and major new challenge to Intel. This is from Reuters, Reuters by Stephen Nellis and Max A. Cherney. Cherney. NVIDIA dominates the market for artificial intelligence computing chips. Now it's coming after Intel's long-term, a long-time stronghold of personal computers. NVIDIA has quite quietly begun designing central processing units, CPUs that would run Microsoft's Windows operating system and use technology from ARM holding with two familiar, uh, two people familiar with the uh, matter told Reuters, the AI chip giants new pursuit in part of Microsoft's effort to help chip companies build ARM based processors for window PCs. Microsoft's plan uh, plans to aim at Apple, which has nearly doubled its market share in the uh, three years since releasing its own ARM-based chips in-house for its Mac computers, according to preliminary third-quarter data from research firm IDC. Advanced Micro Devices AMD also plans to make chips uh, with ARM technology, according to people familiar with the matter. NVIDIA and AMD could sell PC chips as soon as 2025. One of the people familiar with the matter said NVIDIA and AMD would join Qualcomm, which has been making ARM-based chips for laptops since 2016. I've heard of Qualcomm. You know, Qualcomm's an interesting stock to me. Not financial, not financial advice or anything. Do your own research thing. But I've just heard of it. That's all. As far as chip production um, goes in the stock sector. So, uh, yeah, they've been making since 2016. And at an event on Tuesday that will be attended by Microsoft executives, including Vice President of Windows and Devices, Bhavan Davalori, Qualcomm plans to reveal more details about its flagship chip that a team of ex-Apple engineers design, according to a person familiar with the matter. NVIDIA shares closed up 3.84%, and Intel shares ended down 3.06% after Reuters' report on NVIDIA's plans. ARM's shares were up 
4.89% at close. NVIDIA spokesperson Ken Brown, AMD spokesperson uh, Brandy Marina, and, and ARM spokesperson Christina, uh, sorry, Kristen Ray, Microsoft spokesperson Pete Wooten all declined comment. NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm's efforts could sh uh, shake up a PC industry that Intel long dominated, but which is under increasing pressure from Apple. Apple's custom chips have given Mac computers better battery life and speedy performance that rival chips that use more energy. Executive Executives at Microsoft have observed how efficient Macle, um, Apple's uh, Macles, Apple's ARM-based chips are, including with AI processing and desire to attain similar performance. One of the sources said. So, in all, uh, Microsoft tapped Qualcomm to spearhead the effort by moving Windows operating systems to ARM's underlying processor architecture, which is long-powered smartphones. In their small batteries, Microsoft granted Qualcomm an exclusivity arrangement to develop Windows compatible chips until 2024. Microsoft has uh, encouraged others to enter the market. Once that exclusivity deal expires, the two sources told Reuters, Microsoft learned from the 90s that they don't want to be dependent on Intel. Again, they don't want to be dependent on a single vendor, says Jay Goldberg's chief executive D2D advisory. A finance and strategy consulting firm, if ARM really took off in PC chips, they were never going to let Qualcomm be the sole uh, supplier. Microsoft has been encouraging the involved chip makers to build advanced AI features into the CPUs they are designing. The company envisions AI-enhanced software such as its Copilot to become an increasingly important use, uh, or sorry, part of using Windows. To make that a reality, forthcoming chips from NVIDIA, AMD, and others will need to devote on the chip resources to do so. Or devout, I'm not sure. There is no guarantee of success if Microsoft and the chip firms proceed with the plan. Software developers have spent decades and billions of dollars writing code for Windows that runs on what is known as the uh, x86 computing architecture, which is used by both Intel and AMD. Computer code built for x86 uh, chips will not automatically run on ARM-based designs, and transition could pose challenges. They're probably already having people like write this, uh, you know, whatever new protocols, or having AI just write it themselves these days. I don't know. Intel has also been packing AI features into its chips and recently showed a laptop running features uh, similar to ChatGBT directly on the device. Intel spokesperson Will Moss did not immediately respond to requests for comment. AMD's entry into the ARM-based PC market was earlier reported by chip-focused politician semi uh, publication Semi-Accurate. Thus that exclusive and NVIDIA to make ARM-based PC chips and a major new challenge to Intel. I got new, two more pieces here. I'm going to close out this stream for the day. In the finance markets for today, stocks closed mixed as yields recede from 16-year highs. Stock market news today. It's from Kara Friar and Josh Schaefer from Yahoo Finance. Stocks were mixed on Monday today after benchmark 10-year treasury yield briefly rose above 5% after retreating. Uh, as investors increasingly accept interest rates that will stay higher for longer, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.6% or nearly 200 points, while the S&P 500 dropped nearly 0.2%. Meanwhile, the Nasdaq Composite rose about 0.3%. The ongoing sell-off in bonds and, worried, and worries about an escalation in Middle East hostilities are weighing in the market as it waits for big tech companies to fire up earnings season this week. Stocks have su stuttered as the new normal of elevated borrowing cost has sunk in after Fed Chair Jerome Powell signaled this uh, to central bank commitments to the strategy. After breaching 5% to the start of the day, the 10-year yield was down 4.84% on the Monday. The yield on a 30-year Treasury also fell and now just sits below 5%. So here we go. We got some charting there on S&P 500. Against that backdrop, investors are still bracing for key data to shed light on the strength of the U.S. economy. Readings on the third quarter GDP and the Fed's preferred inflation gauge are expected to uh, expected later this week. Shares of Chevron fell three percent in pre-market after the oil market uh, after the after the ma oil major said it will buy its smaller rival Hess for fifty-three billion dollars in stock, seen as a bid to increase its operations in Go uh, Guyana, Guyana, whatever. Elsewhere in the deals, Roche has uh, Roche has agreed to pay $7.1 billion to acquire Televent, Televant. The uh, bowel drug maker is owned by Pfizer and Royvant Sciences, whose shares rose almost 12%. So we got some live updates there. Yeah, obviously, yeah. That's some, basically the top news we were reading anyways. 
finally, to conclude this out for the day, I'll be reading this tomorrow morning as well. We may see if we're doing these mornings. I just want to test the stream. It's been a busy day. Let's get on into it. Israel Hamas war live updates. Hamas releases two more hostages in Gaza. Health Ministry says death toll tops 5,000. This is from Global News. The CNBC's live block, blog tracking developments on Israeli Hamas. Israel Hamas war. Um, Yosheved Lifshitz. 85, who was held hostage by Palestinian Hamas militants, has, is seen in this handout picture obtained by Reuters on October 23rd as Hamas announced that she was going to be released. Hamas released two elderly hostages on Monday, bringing the total to four. The Palestinian militant organization announced the release of uh, Narit Cooper and Yosved Lifshitz. Uh, and an international committee at the, of the Red Cross confirmed the news. Their transfer follows the Friday release of two American hostages. It's been more than two weeks since Hamas launched its assault in Israel, killing at least 1,400 people and taking lives of more, uh, taking more than 200 hostages. Health, author health authorities in Gaza said over 5,000 people have been killed since the October 7th start of the war between Palest Palestinian militant group Hamas and Israel. More than 15,000 have been injured, the authorities said. CNBC cannot independently verify these numbers. The Israeli defense, uh, Israel defense forces said Monday that its soldiers were conducting a variety of training exercises in order to improve the forces' readiness and capabilities for ground operations on the Gaza Strip. Still, a full surrender of Hamas and the return of the Israeli hostages could end Israel, Israel's war in the Gaza Strip. Israel uh, Defense Forces spokesperson Jonathan Con, uh, Conricus told ABC News Melbourne. Uh, the Biden administration has conveyed to Israel its concerns regarding a looming ground invasion into Gaza according to officials who spoke to the New York Times. So that's about uh, Biden administration concern over effectiveness of looming Israel ground invasion in the NYT report. Um, I heard about that recently as well. The official said the Israeli defense forces do not yet have a clear military pathway to achieve Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's goal of eradicating Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The conversations with the Israeli forces, uh, or officials, sorry, since the Hamas attacks on October 7th, American Officials say they have not yet seen an achievable plan of action, according to the New York Times report. All right. So um, here's the other person who was released as well. So, yeah, and quote, we thank Egypt for the assistance and the Red Cross for their important role as lifesavers. The government of Israel, the IDF, and the entire security establishment will continue to operate with the best of their abilities and efforts to, in order to locate all the missing and return all the abductees at home. The statement said, so what I'm wondering is what they're not saying is like, what in return um, was, you know, worked out to release these two hostages? Um, so in that regards, otherwise, that's it. Israel Hamas war live updates. Hamas releases two more hostages. Gaza Health Ministry says the death toll tops 5,000. And that's unverified by CNBC as of yet. This is from Amanda Marquias, uh, Karen Gilchrist, Gilchrist. And Roxanda uh, Iorash. That's all I have for today. Um, I'm going to be trying to get this up on the YouTube side. And or hopefully maybe X will just allow video downloading. I'll just kind of recap it and put it up on the YouTube side. So you can recap and I'll put the um, link articles in the description box on the below on the YouTube side. Otherwise, have a great and safe day. I'll see you all in the morning for more blockchain tech and finance. Cheers. Ciao. Peace be with you. Stay safe.